How to animate enemies in RPG Maker MZ for the front view. So first uh, side thing to start with, uh, there's a GIF to web animation inserts. So to show that, I uh, go into command here for an event for the plugin command. And it is uh, PKD's V player. So uh, we'll set that and I'll just uh, show the plugin real quick. This one here. There's the website and all that. Uh, here's the game project and under a new folder called movies. And there's the GIF to WebM that I have created. So there's, uh, you call the file name. So we start up and there you go. You can play a GIF in it. Now, of course, um, making it uh, transparent would be a very daunting task. So I'm not sure uh, if, unless it comes pre-made uh, with a, uh, transparency for the background, I don't uh, know how uh, practical this uh, little feature would be, but there is that option. So how to actually do this? So the way this works in the enemies tab, enemies, you can have a lot of them and each enemy has an image property here that you can select and then you can change the image. So, so I say, I'll change that. Boom. I changed the image of the enemy. There's the first one, fairy backup. Boom. That's what the enemy looks like. So I'm going to change that back and you can have lots of enemies and each enemy can have a different image, but that's all they can have. So in the games uh, folder, uh, the where you're putting these images, of course, is in the enemies folder. So here you can see that I have uh, all my different uh, frames for my uh, enemies that I've made with a 3D uh, model of Vroid. Vroid is how I made these. And it turns out there's an event command called enemy transform. So to show that it is on page three, right here, enemy transform. So this takes the enemy that you currently have in the battle. So it looks like there's a maximum of eight you can have. So you can select one enemy and then you can have it to transform into another enemy, which will change its properties and everything else to uh, a different enemy. So I can have this enemy transform into this enemy, giving it its different properties and stats and its different image. So the way you can set this up is to have an enemy that's your base enemy right there and then copy paste the enemy a bunch of times out of the way here like so. Copy paste the enemy. On the first uh, copy what you want to do is to change the base for which um, attack that it is. So we're just going to call this that irritable kick and then we'll select uh, the images that I have and there I have a kick already as the next one very easily to select, boom, kick, and then, so copy that, paste it, paste it, paste it, paste it, paste it for how many frames it is that you have set up. And then the quick way, the quickest way to do this I found is to go like this, tab, tab, side, number, tab, tab, side, number. And then you can double click to select your images like so. So now what I've done is I've created a bunch of copies of the same enemy. And you can see I can scroll through it. There's the different images of the enemy doing an attack. So in the crucial and incredibly important Visual MZ's Battle Core plugin, in the action sequence settings, the quality of life section right here, auto note tag automatically applies the custom action sequence note tag effect to any item or skill that has a common event. Normally it's uh, set to manual, I believe. And then you want to set that to automatic for true. So that's where we're going to be doing the uh, programming, as to say, in the uh, common events. So what you just uh, have to have set up is a skill. There's my kick skill. So normally uh, you would either have to put in a custom script or when you have um, the effects for a given skill to do the effect of calling a common event, the effect of everything about the skill will play first and then it will call into the effects that are listed in the effects box here afterwards. So the common event would play after the skill. But with that uh, quality of life toggle in the Battle Core plugin, it will make it so any um, skills that have uh, common event calls will play the common event before all the skills happen. So for that skill that I have right there, here's how you set it up, where you have uh, some waiting frames for smoothness, and then you have enemy transform again, that's this command right here. So since this is the only enemy, it's going to be enemy one. And we want the enemy to transform into our new kick that we just made uh, here, irritable kick. Okay, that was number one. 
So here we go, kick two. I don't know, oh, there was a V accidentally put there. So uh, we do the same. And actually it's easier, again, if we do the copy pasting so that you don't have to search through the whole list every time. So just do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Oops. Then you get, then it's right there for when you click on it. Again, using spacebar, using enter, using all your keyboard shortcuts as much as you can to save time and clicks. It alternates, it's really confusing to get used to it, it's where it alternates when uh, what function space and uh, enter <laughs> do on the tabs. So you end up going back and forth uh, unwittingly. So now we've set up a command line here in a common event for when the enemy plays the kick skill, they will have a frame and then I'll transform into enemy, transform, 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 transform. Here I have it set to show a battle animation which is uh, right below this, actually, in fact. Enemy transform, show battle animation. And I have it for the enemy. And I have this selected. And of course, you can choose any from your list. Then the plugin command. So again, that's this window over here where you go plugin command. And then you have battle core. You click it. And it takes a second to load because there's a lot for it to load. Look at all this. Look at all these options. It's crazy. I couldn't even scroll through it all. Through it all, there's so many. Fortunately, it's very uh, simply set up that you only need a couple here to make this work the way you want it to. So you need to get the plugin command visual um, action effect. So that would be located here. Uh, mechanics. Now the first one is action effect. Uh, causes the unit to take damage or healing from action and incurs any changes made such as buffs and debuffs. So this is the part that plays the effects of this part of the attack for the kick. So you, you can manually set where it is in the timeline of this common event you want this part to happen. Because otherwise it uh, doesn't happen if you don't have this set. It will just play the stuff in the common events and then the skill will end without applying any of the damage or stats. The animation is uh, its, its own effect as well. So here there's a plugin command for action animation. So instead of having the show battle animation from the normal event command list, uh, you can use the plugins command to also um, show an animation, which uh, action animation there is at the top of the list. Show action animation, show attack animation. I don't know, there's, there's a lot of different things. Um, and of course, a lot of that's for the side view as well. Um, so wait for the animation. That's an important one if you want to have the animation play while the rest of the manual um, enemy image animation is playing out that you have or not. Uh, for this one, I don't need that, so I'll uh, uh, delete that and just rely on the show battle animation. And then you have, again, manual frame waiting for how long you think everything should last. And then lastly, you want to have the enemy transform back into its original starting state. So that's what we have here. There, there was the test. This is where we made the new ones for the frames. And then lastly, you want to transform back so that they're in the uh, original state and it's easy to go to the enemy at any time. And then you can adjust the parameters it's like so. I'm going to set the kick to the highest value of nine so that they will do that in the demonstration. And then uh, simply end it off with the plugin command finish the action which is finishing the skill so that the skill ends in the common event ends because otherwise it will keep looping, um, which is a very interesting but frustrating thing that I had to figure out uh, manually and through searching up other videos that were using this plugin to see how it actually uh, needs to function because otherwise without this finish action, the way that it sets itself up calls on this skill. Now it's set to the skill calls on the common event first before finishing the skill. And the common event does its thing where it would then try to finish what's uh, in the uh, command of the skill. But the skill itself still contains the command under the effects here to call on the common event. And so when that happens, the common event has to play first and it will be stuck in a loop of coming back to here, this page, and doing it over and over again. And that's really all there is to it. It's very laborious, but it gives a workable good effect. Also, is this calling the right one? I, f I keep forgetting that the second um, attack locks out all the abilities, so that the enemy has to do that first. So, attack, boom. That kick was what we just made right now. All these animations, this is the enemy transforming. 
before our eyes. And there you have it. Now there is uh, one minor issue that I don't know if it's even possible to solve. It's a uh, display action is uh, what will show the text for the attack on the screen, which will reveal one little issue that I don't think is gonna be possible to correct for. So see there, kick, irritable woman does a kick. Now keep going. Irritable woman B. B does a kick. B does a kick. C does a kick. Irritable woman D does a kick. So in the database, it has to do this, I guess, but when the enemy is transforming, the original enemy is no longer there. This is the enemy. So this is just counts as itself. It would be enemy A. Will it um, show the different names? Yes, irritable A doesn't attack. Irritable B doesn't attack. Irritable C doesn't attack. I don't know why that was the only one to be animated and not the other ones, but okay. So you get the idea that once this enemy transforms, it disappears. And then once it transforms back, it's a new enemy with the same ID. Yeah. And that's why the game's logic engine has to categorize it as a new version of the enemy that it transformed back to, which it does by labeling it A, B, C, and so on. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's a way to hide that label, uh, meaning that, yeah, to, in order to use this, if you want to have your attack names displayed, then you have to <laughs> have uh, that be displayed as well. So I'll just read over the rest of my uh, text here. If you change the stat, oh yeah, there was a very important um, piece of information to know about the enemy stats with the enemy transform effect, which is that all the parameters for the enemy will reset back to the state that it, that it is for their current transformation, except if their max HP or MP was ever lower in any of the transformations that they went through. Here I have the HP set to 3,500. If she transforms into the fairy girl who has 961 HP and then transforms back into the irritable woman, she will also have 961 HP, but still having a max HP of 35,000, even if she doesn't take any damage. Uh, everything else, the stats will be the same as well. So that, of course, would uh, create a huge problem for any uh, adjustments for balance testing that you would need to do. The uh, only solution that I have for that is to overvalue your enemy's um, max HP and MP. And then uh, if you need to, at the start of the battle, you can simply use the effect for change enemy HP and MP to decrease it by however much you think is the right amount that you want. And one other little trick is that, so when you're having the enemy go through all these uh, different transformations and such, it would, of course would be an absolute pain to say, I don't like 70 attack, I want her to have 75 attack, uh, or on, on this one rather, 75 attack. But to do that, then for each one of these, or if you want to change all the stats, then that's too many to do, then it would be quicker to um, just copy your new stat value sheet and then paste it over all these ones again which you then have to do the, the naming and the image selection. That's a lot of stuff to do. Or to shortcut this is that the change in the stats only matter on the enemy transformation state frame that you have selected before the action effect takes place because the rest of those are not being drawn upon for determining how much uh, defense the, you or the enemy has or how much the attack you or the enemy has. So here I have it set for the attack effects happens on the transformation of frame six. And so that's why I have it also labeled here that six is the frame at which the effect takes place. So if I want to change that, I can simply go one copy, one paste, and then I can set the, you know, the name back to this. So uh, that does it for all my tutorialing then. I hope uh, this will be something that people enjoy and find use out of, because I sh certainly would have loved to have a tutorial series uh, like this made for me before I uh, had to spend weeks trying to figure out and find all this stuff uh, for myself, scouring the internet and learning all this stuff as a completely new person to any game making of any kind. And uh, maybe you'll check out some of my other videos too if you're nice.